हेलो सी ए फाइनल स्टूडेंट्स सो दिस इज द नेक्स्ट रिविजन वीडियो फॉर सी ए फाइनल ऑडिट कवरिंग द एस एस विच आर कवर्ड इन चैप्टर नंबर थ्री नाउ वेन यू लुक एट चैप्टर नंबर थ्री ऑफ द मॉड्यूल इट कवर्स एस ए थ्री हंड्रेड एस ए सिक्स हंड्रेड सिक्स वन जीरो सिक्स ट्वेंटी फाइव फोर्टी एंड फाइव ट्वेंटी एज द एग्जाम्स आर नियरिंग ऑब्वियसली आई एम गोइंग टू एंश्योर दैट आई कवर इट इन द लिस्ट पॉसिबल टाइम ओके नाउ आई एल ऑल्सो गिव यू ब्रीफिंग अबाउट वट काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ट but obviously this video is meant for revision purpose so i hope you are using it for revision purpose if you have not studied audit earlier and you are looking at this video for the first time and if it helps you in understanding the concepts then it is fine but that is your call that you have to take okay so sa 300 planning and audit of financial statements when we look at sa 300 planning and audit of financial statements the core content of this sa gets divided into two parts whenever you want to plan and audit of financial statements you have to carry out two activities one is preliminary engagement activities second one is planning activities think like this when you start your day let us say today you woke up all right and when you start your day you go for brush washroom all right straight away you don't sit and start planning your day okay so there are some preliminary engagement activities to be completed only after that you can complete your and you can start your planning activities that is why first is preliminary engagement activities second is planning activities and obviously preliminary engagement activities will have an impact on planning activities this video is in 100% english to serve south india students majorly south india students and students who prefer to learn in 100% english english videos are separately given so preliminary engagement activities are the activities that you will perform at the beginning the very first thing at the beginning of current audit engagement that means every year when you start the audit these are the activities that you are going to perform okay now in preliminary engagement activities what needs to be done and why it needs to be done see because this is the starting of every year all right that is why obviously first of all you should be very clear with your terms of engagement all right okay that these are my terms so that so that there is no misunderstanding second you need to be very clear okay i want to accept this client okay i want to continue with this client in the video of quality control we had discussed client acceptance and continuous procedures so that you are very clear okay there are no ethical issues with this client third you should be very clear about your ethical requirements <coughs> especially independence to ensure that there is no problem with your independence all right so you can remember in this manner 210 220 220 okay so one about terms of engagement and two quality control points and why it needs to be done obviously that you can understand along with the what part itself now obviously if there is some problem in these activities all right the more knowledge you gain and the more clear about your scope or you are not clear whatever is the outcome whether positive or negative it is going to impact your planning activities okay now everyone over here when it comes to planning the discussion of planning gets divided into two parts all right one is that you have to establish a strategy and then second is you have to develop a plan now listen to me very carefully why i have written the word strategy as first 2.1 and why plan as 2.2 because strategy is nothing but mental work lots of mental work like if you are the captain of indian cricket team first you will do a lot of mental work that is strategizing all right and then you will say okay these are my list of players these many players will bowl these many overs this is what is going to happen so planning is nothing but a description of the procedures description of the procedures all right so that is why first we develop a strategy and then we develop a plan okay this is one of their mcqs also first strategy and then plan because strategy will set the std of audit scope timing and direction of audit and it will guide the development of overall audit plan so strategy is going to impact your planning okay now when it comes to development of audit plan it is nothing but a description description of what audit procedures which procedures audit procedures are but which procedures risk assessment procedures further audit procedures and other audit procedures as per other essays so it is a description of nature timing and extent of risk assessment procedure further audit procedures and other audit procedures as per other essays all right so i hope you are clear with the word strategy and you are also clear with the word plan now formula based studies over here for the next few minutes that when it comes to strategy what are the questions that are given in the module that have been highlighted all right two major discussion when you are establishing your audit strategy what are the factors to be considered 
you know in exams they will give you a case study type question but if the if the last line of the question says what are the factors to be considered in establishing overall audit strategy all right then these points you have to come up with and you cannot write other points that means do not go for any kind of fakeology over there ensure that you are writing only these points factors to be considered will have five points as you can see it in my notes all right if you like the effort then please share this video with others okay now factors to be considered in establishing overall audit strategy if the question deals with audit strategy and the last line says factors to be considered you have a five point answer one two three four five i'll give you the code word to remember this all right so the code word is character of reporting team character of reporting team resulted in resources come on tell me character of reporting team resulted in resources okay so when you are establishing audit strategy the biggest fear that i have is that students may end up writing too many points in their own words please ensure that you are writing these head points first of all you should be very clear about the characteristics of the engagement that okay this is my engagement this is my scope and i need to stay within that if you see within those points also i have given some examples so if at all you have to elaborate that point those examples are going to help you second you should be very clear about your reporting objectives that okay these are my reporting objectives these are the kind of communications i need to make with management and those charge with governance this is my timetable this is my deadline all right so that is called as reporting objectives okay then you have to you need to have your team right but how do i direct that team what are the factors that are very important in directing the team for example materiality volume of the business size nature complexity of the entity these are the factors that will help you in directing the team so factors to be considered in directing the team and even the fourth point the results of preliminary engagement activities for this there is a common set of examples that i have given over here in the module also similar thing they have done so let me explain the head point third point is factors to be considered in directing the engagement team's efforts that if you want to direct the team's efforts these are the factors to be considered and fourth point is as i explained logically to you that preliminary engagement activities will naturally have an impact on planning activities that is why they are using the word results of preliminary engagement activities and your past experience and the knowledge that you have gained and at the end this has to be the last point why i have Uh, organize the code word in such a manner that resources word comes as the last word because this has to be the last point this cannot be the first point because after doing so much of mental work only then you will be very clear about what kind of resources do you need ascertaining uh, the nature timing and extent of resources so come on factors to be considered character of reporting team resulted in resources characteristics of the engagement that define the scope reporting objectives all right and the kind of communications that are required then teams effort to be directed results of preliminary engagement activities which will obviously have an impact on planning activities and the last point is ascertaining the nature timing and extent of resources all right these are the factors to be considered in establishing overall audit strategy the another question of audit strategy which is very famous that how audit strategy will help you what are the benefits see this questions will be arranged in a case study form all right so they will tell you very clearly that audit assistant wants the guidance of audit strategy how audit strategy helps you all right so if the question somehow gives you the feeling of audit strategy and what are the benefits of establishing audit strategy or how audit strategy will help the auditor then this has to be the answer so along with the revision video i am also telling you how they are going to arrange the particular question all right so audit strategy will help auditor in determining in determining what in determining nature timing extent and management of resources just remember one line n term of resources the nature of resource what kind of resource do i need what kind of qualitative resource do i need timing when do i need it for example in stock audit you need large number of employees all right extent of the uh, i mean extent of the resource so stock audit 31st march when do i need it extent large number of employees so nature timing extent gets covered in that stock audit example and then management of resources that means dsr of the resource directing supervising and reviewing the resources am i clear with this yes 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 so one more time planning activities divided into two strategy plan strategy has two questions factors to be considered and benefits of establishing audit strategy now developing an audit plan the plan is nothing but a description of audit procedures and there can be further set of questions over there which as you can see i have given it on the next page other planning related questions so these many concepts they have covered in the module all right the very first concept is that boss planning is not just 
initial stage it is a continuous process right we plan we perform we report but during the course of audit plan can change also right so planning is not a discrete separate isolated phase it is not that kind of phase it is a continuous and iterative process continuous and iterative cyclical process it keeps on happening continuous process all right now this will be the line of the question but let me tell you the real question that they will ask after this line is very simple examples of activities to be performed before the performance of further audit procedures all right you can go to any see if the, you have a problem with this word risk assessment procedure further audit procedures i mean the basics of standards all right then you can go to my mobile app go to any course just see the first couple of videos which are always there as demo videos which are unlocked and you can see some essay basics over there but just to give you in short in risk assessment procedures we try to obtain an understanding of the entity its environment its system we just try to understand things whereas in further audit procedures we try to test the things all right so risk assessment is always before further audit procedures correct so what are the activities to be performed before further audit procedures what are the activities to be performed before we begin our testing stage all right you should be very clear about the entity the law the afrf you should set your maturity level all right so that these are the activities you can remember any two out of this so legal framework all right so you should be very clear the laws and regulations applicable to the entity the materiality should be very clear you should perform other risk assessment procedures to find out risk of material misstatement then you should develop a checklist program and stuff all right and involvement of experts correct so these are the activities to be performed you know you should be very clear about these things only then you can perform your further audit procedures okay now these examples they have given so if you write couple of examples from these points then it is great okay now audit plan benefits i don't know why they have given this in final same module this is a very basic answer uh, you can just read once and write on your own there is no problem over there the but yeah this is going to be a proper case study based question so if they tell you that you are conducting audit of x entity for the first time there is a change of auditors or previous rfs were not audited whatever it is but you are conducting audit of x entity for the first time that means it is an initial audit engagement all right and if the question talks about planning part okay so special considerations in planning this audit what are the special things in initial audit engagement let me tell you these things are always there right but the special things are because it is your first year you would have performed proper client acceptance procedures which i have discussed in my quality control video right proper client acceptance procedures you would have performed because it is your first year and if previous year was audited by someone else then obviously you would have had a communication with that previous auditor which is one of the mandatory requirements in professional ethics chapter because it is your first year there is a separate sa sa 510 which talks about opening balances so obviously in the very first year you are expected to verify properly the opening balances even though you may not have audited the previous year correct so these are the three unique points for this we need to plan all right and you will get your marks look at this considerations in initial audit engagement communicating with predecessor auditor client acceptance procedures and one reference of verification of opening balances which will be a reference to sa510 now tell me let us say i have two audits one is audit of reliance industries limited second one is audit of natugara private limited which audit team do you think i will properly dsr direct supervise and review obviously the team which has gone to reliance industries limited so these are this is one of the biggest factor that i have considered in planning the dsr of the audit team all right that size nature complexity of the entity the risk involved materiality these are basic points factors for planning the dsr of audit team size nature complexity of the entity the area of audit the risk involved and the competence of team members so size nature complexity of the entity the area of audit the risk involved and the capabilities and competence of team members so sarc or cars or arcs whatever is the code word that you want to use all right so these are some small small planning related questions which they have given now listen to me this is your proper mcq content the next content as i told you it is the strategy the mental work that we will do first which will be followed by the plan so relationship between overall audit strategy and audit plan that audit never forget these three points these are very sensitive points from mcq point of view that audit strategy is prepared before the audit plan because first we will do the mental work and then we will develop the description of the nature timing and extent of procedures all right plan is a proper description so obviously it is more detailed than audit strategy because strategy is mental work all right only key decisions are documented okay then in practical life if you see it's not like from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock i will first think about strategy and then develop plan all right so in book it is okay to write these things but in practical life we also know that audit strategy and audit plan both of them are 
interrelated changes in one may affect the other and they may not necessarily be sequential processes so all these three points all right are correct okay so remember this for the mcq part it is conceptually also i have convinced you on these points so these concepts are about planning and strategy and stuff now there is one more concept connected with sa 300 which they have given and this is the last concept of sa 300 that is the concept of audit program what is audit program see first there is a mental work that is strategy all right after strategy we have plan description of the procedures but this plan needs to be given in the form of instructions to the team all right and when i give in the form of instructions to the team i need to write which item needs to be verified who will do it how they will do it the nature timing extent of procedure what kind of sample needs to be taken everything needs to be given in the form of instructions so when you convert your plan in the form of instructions to the audit team that becomes audit program it will have the entire timetable duration that is required to complete the task everything all right so audit program is nothing but the list of audit procedures and instructions to be followed by the member now when we look at the module there are three possible questions when it comes to audit program first one is very simple factors to be considered matters to be considered that even if you write simple answer like the common points like materiality size nature complexity of the entity and all of those points are also fine i have given a code word over here and accordingly you have to write so i don't think i have to spend more time over here these are basic points which are used in many standards all right however there is one good point over here when you write this point that boss one of the matter to be considered in developing audit program is the plan so examiner will get understand that okay you know this that first plan is developed and then we develop an audit program okay so that is one good point over there second point modifications or changes to audit program second question modification or changes to audit program tell me in the first year if you have developed an audit program in the second year third year can you continue with the same program sir it depends whether there are changes in circumstances whether we have come across some new findings all right so can i say before starting every year you will have at least have to review your program yes that is the point that what are the three main reasons why do you feel that every year at least for one or two days you should sit and review your program all right whether your program still remains relevant or not because your past experience would have changed the perspective second there could be more changes in business and the external environment or maybe when you performed the risk assessment procedure in the current year that means when you again tried to obtain an understanding in the current year you came across some new points on it which you would have missed out in the last year so risk assessment procedure of the current year so one more time the experience that you have gained in the past then changes and the risk assessment performed in the current year all right so experience changes the risk or risk changes experience whatever it is right these three words i want in your answer if they ask you a question what are the three main reasons for reviewing the program every year all right so if you understand the concept and if you just you know have this broad mind uh, outline in your mind that okay these are the possible questions so if the question is with respect to program you will come to know that okay only these three four questions are possible all right accordingly you can write the answer then they just want you to give some examples that why you will change the program in between the current year audit all right so let us say in april or you started the audit and somewhere you know in between you feel like okay i need to change the program when i mean what are the examples that will make you feel that during the course of audit you need to alter the program if all of a sudden there is an increase in the volume if the internal controls are not as effective as you had thought earlier all right or if there is um, an extraordinary increase all right in the in the in in the in the bad debts and stuff so you can write any two three examples but if you write two examples from here then it is better all right then so third third category of question from audit program is you know the question will look technical but it's very simple when an auditor is appointed to audit the accounts of an entity for the first time so they will set up a case study as if you are conducting audit of an entity of of x entity for the first time so it is your first year so initial audit engagement but the last line of the program see for initial audit engagement we have already done one question about considerations of planning correct but if the last line of the question says that what are the stages of developing audit program so my 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 request is that read the question properly it should not be like that you just saw one question on initial audit engagement and you just jumped on the or uh, three points that we had discussed earlier all right be a little patient in understanding the question and writing it so if it is initial audit engagement and if they ask you stages of drawing audit program what are the stages first you should develop an outline that what needs to be included in the audit program the set of instructions 
then try to understand the entity its system then fill up the program okay then if you feel that there are some special procedures to be done because it is the first year then carry out those procedures all right so look at this to begin first you should have an outline then after reviewing the internal accounting system details should be filled up okay and then special procedures which are applicable to the initial audit all right for those you need to fill up the instructions or carry out those instructions correct so these are the three stages of developing an audit program and with that your sa 300 revision is done and dusted just ensure that you have good grip over these points and if you have the question bank whether it is my question bank or any other professor's question bank you can just go through those questions glance once to gain your confidence all right nothing more needs to be done over here in your revision purposes then the next sa that is covered is the entire 600 series sa 600 610 620 which again turns out to be little technical and the good news is that it is very very scoring all right so please ensure that everyone is with me in this discussions now when it comes to 600 series it is all about using the work of another uh, i mean using the work of some other person so you are an auditor you are using the work of someone else that is 600 series now let me tell you the basic principle you know whenever you are using the work of others you need to evaluate across 600 series you will see this these lines you need you cannot blindly trust others you can use their work you can rely upon their work but provided you have exercised some reasonable skill care and caution so you need to evaluate the cco of such other person so what is cco c for competence c for capability and o for objectivity you need to evaluate the cco of others correct and more importantly you also need to evaluate the adequacy of the work so when it comes to using the work of others never forget these lines first evaluate the person so cco competence capability and objectivity if the person is very competent capable objectivity working with an unbiased mind fine but then whether the person has actually done the work all right i am also capable but have i actually done my work all right that is the point all right so adequacy of the work so first evaluate the person second evaluate the work this is what you will see in 600 series if you can trust the person if the work is adequate then you can rely upon the work performed by them am i clear with this okay now it is very important that you understand that whenever auditor is using the work performed by others which essay exactly is applicable in which situation 610 i love the title of 610 using the work of internal auditor so there is no confusion whenever the question is about using the work of internal auditor students are easily able to understand this is 610 i also like the title of 620 using the work of auditors expert so let us say auditor is appointed some engineer actually and stuff using his work students are able to understand this is ss620 i don't like the title of ss600 because the title of ss600 says using the work of other auditor okay right? using the work of other auditor there are so many auditors in the market you know concurrent auditor system auditor this auditor that auditor all right stock auditor So when you look at the title of 600 you feel like okay using the work of any other auditor is covered over here but that's not the case do not judge the essay just by the title all right so when you look at the title it is little misleading that is why please ensure that everyone is focused on this particular diagram essay 600 is applicable only if this situation exist all right okay now everyone over here Imagine you are the auditor of X Limited. X Limited is the parent entity of the, these subsidiaries associates, and X Limited also has some branches. All right. So you are the auditor of X Limited, auditor of financial statements of X Limited. That means you are the principal auditor. All right. Okay. Now X Limited owns, controls, significant influence these subsidiaries associates, joint ventures, and it has its own branches also. These subsidiaries associates, joint ventures, branches, and stuff they are audited by some other auditors. Other auditor. Other auditor. other auditor word is also defined other auditor means auditor of financial statements of the components i repeat other auditor means auditor of financial statements of the components these are components all right and these the statutory auditors i mean the auditor of financial statements of these components when you are using the work of these auditors all right then 
SA 600 comes into picture. So you are the principal auditor using the work of other auditor. I hope I am very clear with this. All right. Now, even if you see entire SA 600, it is covered in this one slide. All right. The entire SA 600 has only these many key points. All right. First of all, and all of these points have been questioned. First of all, you are the principal auditor, right? You need to accept your position as a principal auditor. And for accepting the position as principal auditor, these, these are the basic things that you should analyze, all right? act like a principal auditor. For this purpose, auditor would consider. As you can see, the code word, code word is fine. But obviously, if you are the principal auditor, imagine there are 300 subsidiaries, 400 subsidiaries and stuff. You need to do little bit of materiality analysis because there can be some components which are immaterial. And let me tell you, you can exclude the immaterial components. That means <laughs> you can exclude in auditor. It will be considered in consolidated financial statements. But you can exclude the coordination with those auditors because those components are immaterial. All right. So that is allowed under SA 600. So look at this. Materiality of the portion of financial information which you are going to audit and which other auditor is going to audit, that needs to be very clear because immaterial components, I am repeating this again and again, immaterial components can be excluded from SA 600. Alright, okay. Then you should do a little bit of risk of material misstatement analysis. As you can see over here, M for materiality, R for risk of material misstatement analysis. That what can be the risk of material misstatement in the financial statements of the components and accordingly you need to go ahead. All right. Then you should also obtain the knowledge of the business of the components. And once you have this Mr. Business all right, knowledge, then you will perform the additional procedures as given in this essay. So obviously this has to be the last point. This was questioned in July 21 and the line was very clear. Procedure, uh, you need to accept that you are the principal auditor and for this purpose, what are the considerations? So acceptance as principal auditor anywhere in the question, these are the points that you are going to write. All right. Now, you are very clear that, okay, these components are material. I want to coordinate with the auditors of these components. Then as a principal auditor, what are the procedures that you need to perform? Because you cannot blindly trust the auditor of the components. All right. Even though they are the statutory auditor, still at least these many procedures you need to perform. And for that, I have created one code word. This is nothing but, you know, that as a principal auditor, how will you work with that other auditor? Correct. So written special advice plan. I, I have written special advice for everyone. <laughs> plan and arrange timetable for accounts and audit. Okay. So this is the code word. Now, written. Listen, from other auditor, you can take a written declaration. That other auditor, please give it to me in writing that you have followed the significant accounting, auditing and reporting requirements. Special, whatever are the matters of special audit considerations like related party transactions, like uh, significant estimates, like, you know, huge amount of stock, cash, these matters, you need to discuss it with the other auditor. Please ensure that your English is soft when you're writing this. You cannot write principal auditor will instruct the other auditor. No, no, no. Discuss, inform, advise, such kind of words have been used. All right. Because other auditor is not your article. Advice. Advise the auditor. What? That what? How important he is for you? I mean, his work is for you and the report that will be used. All right. Then plan and arrange timetable. Look at this. From the planning stage itself, start your coordination. Don't straight away connect with him in the reporting stage. From the planning stage itself, make all the arrangements and ensure that you are discussing the timetable for completion of audit because only if the other auditor completes the work, then you will be able to start with your reporting work. Correct? Okay. Accounts and audit. Whatever are the significant accounting auditing requirements, it is expected that both of you will discuss that with each other. Am I clear with this? So this is the kind, uh, this is how you're going to license with him. This is how you're going to work with that other auditor. There are some more points given between coordination between the auditors. All right. That principal auditor and other auditor, they need to ensure that they are licensing properly. That means they're coordinating, connecting properly. Okay. Sir, just a minute. I just forgot to tell you that when to write this particular answer. So if there is a question which makes you very clear that okay you are the principal auditor and stuff and then uh, how will you coordinate with the other auditor what kind of procedures you need to perform the moment you see this you start vomiting these lines all right then other auditor is also expected to coordinate with the principal auditor principal auditor is also expected to advise other auditor of important matters so both of them need to discuss with each other inform important matters and stuff little bit of romance you need to increase over there <laughs> all right okay now listen to me D and E point can be proper MCQ case study based. Boss, 
if i am the principal auditor and you are the other auditor be very clear in the character i am the principal auditor and let us say you are the other auditor then let me be very clear that i can i i can send you a questionnaire consisting of various questions and you please answer that questionnaire but principal auditor cannot 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 establish his right over the working papers of other auditor be very careful with this point all right because working papers of the auditor are the property of auditor and i am principal auditor not some regulatory authority all right so please be careful about this i may send you a questionnaire and you have to answer that questionnaire but i cannot establish right over your working papers all right so remember this line division of responsibility boss you are the auditor of the branches of the subsidiaries of the joint venture associates basically the components i am the auditor of the parent entity i am responsible for parent entities uh, audit you are responsible for those components audit you are not some child that i have adopted all right so if i can if let us say you commit some fraud all right or there is some error over there all right and you are negligent but if i can prove it in the court of law that boss these many procedures i had performed i had sent you a questionnaire you answer that questionnaire and you intentionally filled up wrong answer then i am not supposed to act like james bond and investigate on right, those answers in detail these are the procedures that i need to perform if i have performed these procedures then because of the negligence of other auditor principal auditor cannot be held liable and this is exactly the case study in the new syllabus module i have everything with me in my mind so i am giving you it asap so that you can understand what are the points to be focused upon this line please ensure that you are remembering this line principal auditor would not be responsible in respect of the work entrusted to other auditors except in the circumstances we should have aroused this suspension so if i if i have performed these procedures and i came to know that other auditor did not perform his procedures properly and you know other auditor just relied upon written representation now these are the circumstances which should have you know made me believe that boss i cannot trust you then i should then i will react to it and move ahead all right and otherwise please do not expect me to investigate the work of other auditor all right that is not a correct expectation from the principal auditor all right all right now listen to me you are the other auditor i am the principal auditor let us say that i have relied upon you after performing these procedures i have not developed any doubt and let us say you are also very honest person you gave me your audit report i went through that report and you have given a qualified opinion or adverse opinion now just because you have given a qualified opinion or adverse opinion that does not mean that principal auditor will also modify the opinion because i am auditing the parent entity what may be material at the component level may not be material at the parent entity level so i hope you understand this line very clearly so the reporting lines what i have done is i have created boxes and i have written separately over here all right look at this if other auditor issues a modified report then principal auditor shall consider materiality and decide modification accordingly okay now listen to me let us say again repeat case study i have relied upon you you are also very honest person you have also done the job i have also done my job i went through your audit report and you have given a clean opinion so there is no problem right but let me tell you apart from the opinion discussion there is one important line that institute has written so whatever opinion you have given that i will consider in my opinion part if it is material then i will consider the impact of it otherwise i leave it but irrespective of the opinion that you have given i need to write somewhere in my audit report that i have used the work of other auditor i have relied upon that and other auditor is responsible for audit of the components and i am not responsible for that because this line somewhere i need to include it in my audit report also look at this if principal auditor relies upon work of other auditor then he shall state the extent of financial information which is audited by other auditor and how much of that financial information is included in the financial information of the entity so basically i will have to give some kind of numerical breakup all right that okay this is the percentage of turnover which has been audited by other auditor and that will get into other matter paragraph second let us say i have decided that i why other matter paragraph because it is an auditing clarification those things i have discussed in my very first revision video itself acha let us say that um, i have decided that i cannot rely upon you right? and i have also decided that i am going to audit that myself but come on look at the time look at the constraints let us say management is not cooperating or there are practical problems <coughs> so i am not able to rely upon you and i am not even able to audit the component but this is limitation on scope of audit sufficient and appropriate audit evidence is not available even though the financial statements are there but i am not able to trust that so basically this will turn out to be limitation on scope of audit if i can't rely upon you and if i can't audit the component then it will turn out to be limitation if i can't rely upon you and if i'm able to audit the component then it is fine if principal auditor cannot rely upon other auditor and he has concluded that it is not possible 
to perform alternate audit procedures then in that case principal auditor will express a qualified opinion or disclaimer of opinion come on in my very first revision video i told you if sufficient and appropriate audit evidence is not available creating a losa all right then in that case i will have to go for either qualified or disclaimer of an opinion sir why not uh, clean opinion this can be immaterial component also i told you in the very beginning itself that first to evaluate the materiality of the component only if the component is material for you then you move ahead and if you are not able to trust the finances of that material component itself then at least it will lead to either a qualified or disclaimer of an opinion i hope i am clear with this and these are the key points when it comes to sa 600 entire sa is extremely 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 practical all right okay now <clears throat> uh, you will enjoy 610 and 620 for sure <laughs> because what i have done is that i have created some very smart notes to compress these essays 610 using the work of internal auditor so i'm not going to waste a lot of time in the introduction at least you know the title that boss if you are the auditor of financial statements of the company and someone else is the internal auditor of the company all right you know that all companies may not go for internal audit only where it is applicable companies appoint internal audit or some companies appoint voluntarily section 138 of companies act 2013 talks about internal audit all right so you are the auditor of financial statements of the company and there is one more another auditor who is the internal auditor and you are using the work so that is ss610 using the work of internal auditor now listen to me very carefully look at my notes and the arrows and the lines that i've done when you're using the work of internal auditor there are two approaches of using the work approach one and approach two first let me explain approach two then you will understand what is approach one approach two internal auditor using the work of internal auditor under direct assistance arrangement that means internal auditor will work under the dsr direction supervision and review of the external auditor that means he will actually work as if my audit team is working under my direction supervision and review practically how much it is possible and stuff leave it all right but this is one kind of approach okay this is possible only if they give some written agreements and huh? okay that okay they, they agree to it you can't force someone all right consent is very important in life approach one then you will understand when i say without direct assistance means normally using the work of a professional uh, reading his reports discussing the work sending him in the questionnaire asking him to reply to that questionnaire these things all right like normally if how you use the work of a professional in exams listen to me very carefully in exams only if they have given direct assistance very clearly then you think from approach two angle because you know both the discussions are different okay so it is very important that when you look at the question of using the work of internal auditor you try and understand whether it is from approach one or approach two so only if direct assistance is given or some kind of clear hint is given you know because they may not write direct assistance but if some kind of clear hint is given that uh, internal auditor is working under direction supervision review of external auditor only then you go for direct assistance i mean approach to wala table otherwise if the question is silent if the question is silent then in that case you will assume that it is approach one that means using the work of internet function without any kind of direct assistance i hope i'm very clear with this yes 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 all right now listen to me how do we ensure that we become masters of the entire sa610 when you go through the entire sa610 there are three important hot questions over there whether it is approach one or approach two but there are three categories of question first evaluate the person that means the internal auditor right whether you really want to use his work okay after you are done with that evaluation and let us say you decide that okay i want to use the work of internal auditor then decide in which areas you can use his work just use your common sense and tell me do you really think you can use the work of internal auditor in verifying that internal controls all right authorization controls and stuff over related party transactions so second thing is that you decide in which areas you can use the work right okay i want to use his work i want to use his work in xyz areas then let us say he has worked in those areas now can i rely on that work i can rely on the person but can i rely on that work is the work adequate now so the third category of the question is evaluating the adequacy of the work performed i hope i am clear with this so you have six major category of i mean six major questions over here three questions multiplied by two approach that is how you will fit ss610 in your mind all right so first 
determining whether to use his work or not that means you want to evaluate the internal auditor this is the line that they will use in the question all right approach one that means you are using the work of internal auditor without any kind of direct assistance normally you are going to use his work first let us evaluate the person let us evaluate his oca objectivity competence and approach is he working with an unbiased mind do you think he has good position in the company to work with a free mind do you think that he has the relevant competence why are we going behind competence 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 word see competence word was not there in ss 600 very clearly because you know that you are using the work of another chartered accountant but when it comes to internal auditor the other person may or may not be a chartered accountant i hope that you are aware about it as per the company law sections and that is where the competence word comes over here and a for approach right whether internal auditor is using some kind of systematic approach for example if he is using standards on internal auditing i'll be very happy all right because even those standards are recommended for internal audit so i'll have to evaluate the oca objectivity competence and approach of the internal auditor's work all right that is when you are using internal auditor without any kind of direct assistance let us say this same question comes for direct assistance that you want to use internal auditor for direct assistance evaluate the internal auditor then you see over there in the code word you see loc so objectivity and competence word gets repeated but you will not see the word a for approach over here can you guess why very good if you have guessed it and if not then listen to me under direct assistance you are going to give him the dsr direction supervision and review so if you are going to give him the dsr direction supervision and review you will decide the approach so i'm not worried about the approach once he agrees for direct assistance but i cannot improve someone's objectivity and competence right so that i will have to evaluate and the very first thing that gets evaluated is the legal prohibition let us say you are conducting audit of a government entity and comptroller and auditor general of india has prohibited you from using the work of internal auditor in certain areas then you can't use it right so loc over there and when it comes to this particular point it is oca i'm intentionally going a little slow even though it is a revision video because it is a tight rope walk if you do it you know it is a shortcut to reach the destination otherwise you will fall down right so if you have used the shortcut we need to ensure that we are going little slow over here so evaluating internal auditor approach 1 and approach 2 these are the two approaches for without direct assistance and direct assistance and these are the points that you are going to write i want a confirmation are you through with this yes 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 If there is sufficient doubt over OCA, then don't use his work. If there is a legal prohibition, then don't use him for direct assistance. And if there is a sufficient doubt over OCA, then don't use him for direct assistance. I think the negative part you can easily write it over there. All right. So now we have evaluated the person. Come back to approach one. No direct assistance. We have evaluated the person. Now the second question is, in which areas and to what extent I can give him the work or I can use his work? All right. So determining in which areas. and to what extent external auditor can use internal auditor's work all right so look at this first of all this is no direct assistance i cannot dictate what is doing so i okay i i i i am relying upon that person okay i am relying upon that person now i will have a word with that internal auditor internal auditor come here what kind of agreement you have with the management show me that agreement oh you are not verifying any accounting control then you are of no use to me bye are you getting my point so i'll have to see the scope i repeat i'll have to see the scope look at the very first point the scope of the work the scope of the work scope of the work all right of internal auditor if the scope is relevant then i can do something i because i'm not able to decide the scope right no? it is decided by the management i hope you are understanding this logically all right now listen to me very very carefully ICI in the module has given certain areas where you can use the work of internal auditor and this is one of their favorite 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 extremely favorite for MCQs and case studies all right so note one which i have given after this table so this table is the core content and then the supporting notes so go to the next page look at this note one work of internal audit function that can be used by the external auditor includes the following all right so first i think this logically you will be able to understand okay now these areas we can use his work testing the operating effectiveness of controls are that is his core work if he is an expert in that if he is using that work i mean he is he is doing that testing the controls then obviously i can use some kind of work no i am not going to blindly rely please understand we have third question also over here evaluating the adequacy of the work but at least in these areas i can use his work all right so testing the operating effectiveness of controls now 
listen to me very carefully for the next few minutes if you focus you are going to score good marks all right let us say that i uh, relate that uh, internet told me that he has verified the authorization controls over related party all right do you think i will i'll be able to use his work over there just think about it you have some doubts sir that is a very sensitive area now listen to me very carefully note 1 and note 2 we will do it together all right note 2 says it gives some areas in these situations either don't use his work or even if you are using it you have to rely less and perform more of the work directly so you can see it very clearly over there higher the assessed romm at assertion level that means if the if the risk of material misstatement is high if there is a high chance of error or fraud avoid using his work or even if you are using his work it should be to a very less extent all right look at this if more judgment is involved in planning the procedures evaluating the evidence that means all the significant judgmental matters all right don't use his work or rely very less upon his work all right so i want everyone to put an arrow over here and write down provided it is not a significant rj area r for risk of material misstatement and j for judgment so provided it is not a significant rj area all right so one thing is very clear if it is a significant rj area then i will perform more of the work directly i will not use his work or i will use less of his work all right so please be very very careful with this okay so you're not reading all points are baba if there is a doubt over objectivity and competence right then to obviously you will not use his work or you will use less of his work no? yes, that is very clear okay the main words were judgment and risk all right So everyone over here, work of internet function that can be used. First point: testing operating effectiveness of controls provided it is not a significant RJ area. Ah, now we are convinced. Okay. Second, little bit of test of details work if he has done. You know, if he has done little bit of vouching of invoices and stuff, you can use his work. Substantive procedures involving limited judgment. Okay. Conceptually understand this. No one is going to ask you the whole list. Okay. And then, this is very sensitive. Imagine you are conducting audit of a manufacturing entity which has hundred storage locations, twenty thirty storage locations. Inter auditor has conducted the stock audit. You cannot be there at every single location. Then, if inter auditor has conducted the stock audit at twenty thirty locations, so come on, you can use this work. That's okay. I am not asking you to blindly rely. Right? We have third category of question coming up. All right. So, observation of inventory counts can be done. I mean, you can use the work over there. then if he has done a little bit of accounting work you know where he has traced the uh, entries and the ledger postings and stuff limited judgment clerical work you can use that tracing transactions through information system relevant to financial reporting tracing work done in the accounting system all right then testing of compliance with regulatory requirements again if it is not a significant rj area so for uh, you know in the invoice that some gst component is there obviously has verified that you can use his work i'm not asking you to blindly rely but at least this area in these areas you can at least use the work it's not prohibited okay then f point is very sensitive you know in ss600 just few minutes back i told you that immaterial components can be excluded from ss600 even if you don't coordinate with the auditors of in, immaterial components that is okay but look at this you can ask the introiter to coordinate with the auditors of immaterial components all right or you can ask the introiter to do a little bit of review of the financial information of the immaterial components all right look at this in some circumstances audit or review of financial information of subsidiaries that are not significant components to the group right? and he can help you over there i'm not asking you to blindly rely we have third category of question coming up but at least in these areas you can use his work all right provided it is not a significant rj area that is it is not a significant risk or judgment area i hope i'm very clear with this yes sir yes sir yes sir so everyone over here in approach 1 we are done with these two questions in approach 2 direct assistance we are done with e evaluating internator in approach 2 also the second question is in which areas and to what extent you can use him for direct assistance all right before you are going to use him for direct assistance please ensure that everything is done in writing all right there has to be a proper written agreement written agreement between the oh, i mean i am the external auditor so between the external auditor and the management that management will not interfere in the work that i am giving to the internal auditor and written agreement between the external auditor and the internal auditor all right regarding the work that is supposed to performed and main thing that internal auditor should maintain confidentiality so please put everything in writing all right 
then areas in which extorator can use intorator to provide direct assistance can use can use can use can use can use can use that note one remains common all right however listen to me one of their most frequently asked question areas in which external auditor is just prohibited just prohibited from using internal auditor to provide direct assistance areas in which external auditor should not use internal auditor to provide direct assistance that is note 3 after this table so everyone over here look at this note 3 one of the most repeatedly asked question the external auditor shall not use internal auditors to provide direct assistance to perform procedures which procedures are baba making significant judgments i am not going to use direct assistance over there any area of significant judgment significant risk direct assistance no 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 without direct assistance also no but to a lesser extent you can use it lesser extent all right but direct assistance no 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 all right higher risk no 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 all right then Work which is reported to the management of DCWG by internal function. Now listen to me very carefully. If internal auditors are already involved in a particular work, okay, okay, that same work we can't ask them only to check it. No self review threat. If they have already done one work and they have reported it to management DCWG, you can't you can't ask them that okay this particular work now you again check it because then it will be self review threat they will never never reveal their mistakes to you so relates to work which is reported to management or tcwg all right then all the decisions under ss610 how many decisions we are making under ss610 first whether to use the work of internet or not in mean, which areas to what extent what kind of you know under direct assistance what kind of dsr needs to be done all of these decision making decision making will be done by myself external auditor decision making obviously will be done by the external auditor all right i hope i made myself very 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 clear yes sir yes sir very sensitive please ensure that you are drinking these points swallowing it it's in your artery veins everywhere all right okay now we are done with two questions under both the approaches last question using the work of internal function without any kind of direct assistance evaluating the adequacy of the work anyways we have not taken direct assistance so we would have performed some work on our own also all right and for those areas where he has worked you know these kind of areas where he has worked i need to do some inquiry observation reperform some of the work very important you don't like rely upon him whatever work he has done at least to some extent please reperform it and if he provides the access then please look at the working papers of the internal auditor also it is better to review see if internal auditor is an employee of the company then in that case so you can easily review the working papers because those are company documents only if the internal auditor is an external person then you will have to request the access and if he provides the access then you can review the working paper so what i want to say is that this particular answer little bit on practical side you can write right and how we will and trust that person i mean the work done how we will evaluate the adequacy of the work so these are the common procedures that you will perform to evaluate the adequacy of the work however when it comes to direct assistance it is not just about evaluating the adequacy after deciding the areas in which you will use this direct assistance you need to do the dsr direction supervision review already you should be satisfied that internet is obtained sufficient and appropriate audit evidence and more importantly most importantly you are also expected to reperform some of the work which is done by the internal auditor all right reperform please don't forget that okay and most importantly mcq whatever are the working papers of internal auditor whatever are the working papers of internal auditor which are prepared under the direct assistance arrangement they remain the property of external auditor i repeat they remain the property of external auditor i hope i have made myself very very clear yes sir yes sir yes sir so please ensure that you are swallowing drinking these points all right especially the points where we can use his work we cannot use his work and stuff in ss610 very very high probability of the question using the work of internal auditor am i clear with this yes ss620 using the work of auditors expert now look at this when it comes to using the work of auditors expert first of all who is an expert see the normal english meaning and audit vocabulary these are two different things you are an auditor of financial statements of the company if you are taking help of another professional in accounts and audit work for accounting standards in the as essays and stuff then let me tell you you are technically just using a consultant and not an expert 
expert means an individual or organization possessing expertise in a field other than accounting or auditing this they have not questioned till date this particular concept 620 they have questioned n number of times but this particular concept that expertise means a field other than accounting or auditing that concept that particular concept they have not touched all right so they will normally give you engineer actually and stuff all right and you will automatically understand using the work of expert but even when auditor is using the work of another ca that can also be using the work of an expert for example that ca is into tax field or it field information technology or taxation field or gst field now that is not accounts and audit are accounting auditing may we use those things but that is not accounts and auditing field right so don't just go by this that if ca is using work of ca then not an expert otherwise he is an expert all right even if an auditor is using the work of another ca still that can be expert you have to focus on the field all right taxation field legal field research field valuation field all right these are all not accounting and auditing fields all right so one more time expert means an individual or organization possessing expertise in a field other than accounting or auditing now experts are of two types one is appointed by the management second appointed by the auditor if the case study talks about audit expert appointed by the management then it is management's expert and that particular concept is covered in sa 500 all right be careful with this if the expert is appointed by the auditor then it's an auditor's expert all right then that is sa 620 okay sa 620 covers this concept which concept expert appointed by the auditor <coughs> now auditors expert can also be of two types internal expert who is a partner or the staff of the auditor or an external expert i mean external person engaged by the auditor fine fine now what are the key points of sa620 now sa620 was given in a very lengthy manner in the module so what i did these are broad i mean a lot of effort has been taken for these notes so if you share it with others i will also feel better all right because knowledge just you know it it it, it just multiplies with sharing all right and obviously i will gain the publicity and <laughs> it's okay if you give me a little bit of publicity for the hard work just motivates me all right so when we look at sa620 these are the four main areas first do i really need an expert second okay i need the expert now i need to sign the agreement with that expert right if it's an external expert but for that even after appointing the expert how much effort will i have to take what kind of work i'll have to do what kind of work i can give it to him all right determining the nature time extent of procedures and agreement with the expert see it is important that you get the, uh, the 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 core of the question all right then chalo i need an expert i have appointed an expert now i need to coordinate with that expert whether that expert's work is adequate or not at the end of the day if i want to write about that particular expert in my audit report can i write it or not so these are the only four categories of questions okay now within each of this category there are further sub questions this is completely divided by me all right all right it's 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 a very customized division that i have done but the best part is that what you see over here will be the last line of the question or will be the core of the questions so these lines i have taken from the module only that these are the concepts all right so module has given various paragraphs and i have divided it into these parts now listen to me for every single concept i have given a note on the next page okay so that when you glance this page you get it very clearly that these are the number of concepts covered and the note is on the next page okay so total 11 notes and this one chart that's it that is sa 620 now my only request is to go through these couple of pages two three times so that you become an expert yourself in sa 620 fine using the work of auditors expert okay we'll go line by line so it's not a flow chart based essay or something it's a descriptive essay all right for that it's very important that you understand the core of the question and you answer accordingly all right determining the need for auditors expert auditors expert can be needed in one or more of the following areas where you will need an expert in which areas in all the areas are when i am understanding the entity that nuclear power plant i will not be able to understand on my own right then if there is a huge uh, technology based uh, system then i will need some it person no all right so understanding the entity understanding their system risk assessment all right 
I understand these are these are these are the audit objectives that I want to achieve, but somewhere there are there will be so much of involvement of other fields, no other than auditing. So I will need the help. So I I will I will need the help in risk assessment procedure. I will need the help in audit further audit procedures. I will need the help in evaluating the sufficiency and appropriateness of audit evidence. That is why I want that expert, right? I have the knowledge of standards, but what about other fields? Correct. So be careful with this. Okay. Auditor who is now listen to me. Tell me if you are a chartered accountant in practice and you are the auditor, but let us see also have law degree with you and you can easily understand the legal, uh, the legal words and technical meaning of the litigation claims and stuff. Then will you need an expert if there is a legal issue? No, only if there is a high profile legal issue you may need it. So an auditor who is not an expert in a relevant field. Other than accounting, auditing, let us say legal field or taxation field. Normally, these two fields, you know, we don't need an expert because we try to understand it on our own only. May be able to obtain a sufficient understanding of that field to perform the audit without an auditor's expert. Through how can I do that? With my own past experience, huh? With my own education in that field. All right. Look at this. Past experience in auditing such entities, education in that particular field, or I can keep on discussing the matters with other auditors or without compromising confidentiality, and I can again enhance my knowledge. All right. So that is second note. Third, I conceptually have to understand the question, then the answer will flow. All right. So my job over here in this particular revision video is that you understand that okay, this is the question. Third, considerations when deciding whether to use an auditor's expert may include the following. See. Auditor does not have endless money, right? He is also limited in the resources. Then, in that case, to decide whether I will really need an expert or not, for that, first let me check whether management has already appointed an expert. Management has appointed an expert, and if I can trust that person, then why there is a need for a second expert? All right. So, considerations when deciding really need an expert. Okay, chalo. Let us say management has not appointed an expert, but I already have the expertise that, but in that particular field. So these are my considerations. All right, when deciding whether to use an auditor's expert, first of all, whether management has appointed an expert. What is the significance of the matter? See, tell me, M R, Mister. All right, materiality and risk of material misstatement. These two points will always be dictating the factor. So materiality involved, risk involved. All right, and what kind of procedures need to be done? So some basic common points also. If you write, you will be able to score marks. All right, okay. Now, fourth question is different from third one. Third one was a general question in deciding whether to whether you want to appoint an expert or not. Fourth is let us say management has already appointed an expert. Now, the decision whether you want to appoint your own expert or not will depend upon which factors. All right. So, look at this. Note four. Let us say if management has appointed an actuary or engineer. Now, my decision whether I really want to appoint an expert or not will depend upon first. What is the nature, scope, and objective of that management expert work? Is is he really is he or she really covering the relevant area? But then, what are the ethics of that person? What is the competence capability of that person? What is the risk involved in the matter? Okay, so look at this: the nature of the so of management expert, whether he is employed or he is an external person. What are the competence capabilities? How much management can influence him? These are the factors which will help me in deciding, even though management has appointed an expert, whether I want to appoint an expert or not. All right. Then, next. Okay. After considering these things, I have decided that I want an expert. Now, I am going to sign an agreement with that expert so that there is no confusion. But you know, let us take an example of a maid. You are going to appoint a maid. Even after appointing a maid, you will have to do some work on your own. All right. So that is the very first question. That even if I am appointing an expert, still I will have to perform some procedures. So what are the matters to be considered in determining the nature, time, and extent of audit procedures? Whether that expert, how much ex the expert that I am going to appoint, if he has the competence, capability, objectivity, if he has the experience, all right. If I have a past experience with him, if the matter is not that sensitive, maybe I will have to perform less work. But if I think on the other side, all right, that I have appointed a little, uh, you know, cheap expert. I mean, less expensive expert, or let us say, uh, the expert does not have too much of past experience in that particular matter. All right. Still, I have appointed that person. Now, every expert is not, you know, straight away cha 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 you know, all right. Then let us say I uh, I don't have past experience with that expert. He is a very experienced person, but we have we are working for the first time. 
all right so these are the matters to be considered in determining the nature timing and extent of audit procedures very very repeatedly asked examination question note 4 and note 5 very repeatedly asked note 5 what is the matter what is the risk of material misstatement whether that expert is an internal expert or external expert because if he's from my firm only i'll be very i'll be very comfortable all right what are the cc of that expert what is my past experience with that expert what is the complexity of the matter all right then next evaluating objectivity of that expert see whenever you want to evaluate anyone's objectivity you have to see all right whether that person <clears throat> has financial interest in the entity has some familiarity interest in the entity all right whether that person is already providing other services to that entity all right or whether that person is a qualified person or not because all the qualified uh, people like ca ca cm and stuff everyone has code of ethics to be followed all right so these are the points that you will evaluate in objectivity okay note uh, six that is done then boss if you are using the work of let us say an architect or engineer in a construction industry if you really want to tell that expert that okay boss this is what i expect from you for that you should have some understanding of the experts field only then you can have a word with that person all right see we don't have understanding of doctor field also but we do discuss with doctor what what is the next course of treatment and stuff right so even if you want to un uh, discuss it with that doctor you should have some basic understanding so that is the point obtaining an understanding of experts field note number seven if you obtain an understanding of the experts field only then you will be able to determine the nature scope and objective of that experts work right? and then at the end after the expert has performed the work you will be in a good position to evaluate the adequacy of the work so at least some understanding you should obtain you cannot be completely blind when it comes to experts field now next very repeatedly asked question is the agreement with auditors expert so i am going to sign an agreement with that auditors expert all right and what are the points that i am going to cover in that particular agreement very very repeatedly asked i want that expert to be very clear about his nasso the nature scope and objective of the work I want that expert to be very clear about what kind of roles and responsibility he has, what kind of roles and responsibility I will have, so that he will be very clear, okay boss, he has to just tell me whether it is in research stage, development stage, after that research and development, index, accounting and stuff, I am going to see that. Alright, so roles and responsibility should be very clear. Then the expert should be very clear about at the end whether he has to give me a certificate, a report or a proper PPT, alright, the communication that will be required and I will have to tell that expert, expert, shh, shh, maintain confidentiality, alright. So everyone over here, R for role, R for responsibilities, then R for report, all right. So RRRs, NASO is confidential. RRRs, not to, not to, not to, not to, not to. NASO is confidential, all right. Okay, okay. Agreement with that auditor's expert. These are the points to be covered in the agreement. Now listen to me very carefully. <coughs> they will give you a case study where they will already tell you that okay boss <coughs> they will already tell you that okay boss uh, you are using the work of an auditor's expert right i mean you're using the using the work of an expert the expert has already done the work now you will have to evaluate whether you can rely upon that work or not so over there you please cover this point about evaluating the adequacy in such kind of case study normally you have to say that first let me go through the findings all right <coughs> just a minute huh? uh ha i have covered it in this manner findings and this word is reasonableness huh? ness only got printed i'll have to see the reasonableness of that expert's findings or conclusions whatever finding conclusion he has for example he says that okay this is the percentage completion of the building all right then i just at least i'll have to go through that once right then whether it is consistent with other audit evidence or not because management also would have created one percentage completion working i will just tally that okay then find sam or okay. s for source data from where the data was sourced for this kind of working and whether that data which was sourced is complete accurate and relevant or not all right then am assumptions and methods gratuity provision in case of actuary and stuff all right lots of assumptions methods used over there at least I'll have to go through that appropriateness, reasonableness of those assumptions and methods. I hope I'm very clear with this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, for this particular find SAM, all right, what I've done is for every single point, there can be one more question. Right? So, I've taken it up on the next page. Let me be very clear. 
if they ask you a very detailed question how will you understand whether there is a detailed question or not like for example the specific procedures to be performed in order to evaluate the adequacy which was done in november 18 once all right in that case you will write find sam but try to extend the answer you know cover points on inquiry observation cover points about reviewing the experts work all right discussion with another expert try to you know you know write a little detailed answer so that is your note number 9 all right they ask you a very detailed question on specific procedures to evaluate the adequacy and stuff all right then if they ask you a question only on assumptions and methods see no matter whatever is the essay whatever is the question for assumptions and methods it has to be appropriate it has to be generally acceptable within the industry within the field all right you'll have to see whether there is a consistency or not in the assumptions and methods so there are some basic two three points when it comes to assumptions and methods it should be generally accepted mostly it should be consistent all right consistent with afrf consistent with those of the management and if there is a difference then we will investigate right so such kind of points then source data was don't worry there will be a very detailed question on that you will have to see the origin of the data completeness accuracy relevance car all right the reliability of the data the authenticity of the data that you can write on your own not a problem so we have uh, 11 different descriptive questions and i have already told you that note number 5 note number uh, note number 4 note number 5 all right note number 8 all right this is something that has been repeatedly asked in exams although note number 10 was asked once in july 21 but i cannot you know be uh, you know very adamant on that but note number 4 5 and 8 have been repeatedly asked i hope i am clear with that yes sir yes sir yes sir all right now can i write the name of that expert in my audit report can i write the name of that expert in my audit report and this is one of their favorite for mcq and case studies all right first of all check whether any law requires the reference or not for example in insurance industry when it comes to calculation of liabilities actually is reference is required all right so if law requires reference then to you must provide reference in the audit report all right <laughs> just because we are writing the reference that does not mean that it is reducing the responsibility of the auditor to form an opinion on the financial statement is the sole responsibility of the auditor but if reference is not required by law then let me tell you voluntarily you are just not allowed to write a reference you just cannot keep on writing about that expert voluntarily if reference is not required by law then ICI says is there is there a modification in the auditor's opinion i mean let us say i gave the percentage completion of building work to that expert and let us say there is a qualified opinion with respect to that particular work then in order to explain that particular qualified opinion i will have to write that expert's reference no just to give a better clarification so if there is a qualified adverse disclaimer so if there is a modified opinion all right yes then auditor may give reference to that expert's work provided if expert has given the consent all right however if there is no modified opinion if it's an unmodified opinion and even reference is not required by law then you are not allowed to give any reference now normally students ask me this doubt sir what if expert does not give the consent over here are baba that in the agreement itself we take the consent so that later on there is no problem but remember this thing if it is an unmodified opinion if there is the reference is not required by law you are just not allowed to give the reference i hope i've made myself very 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 clear yes sir yes sir yes sir so that is your ss620 using the work of <coughs> auditors expert okay now If you look at uh, the next, the last two essays that are pending, so that your chapter three essays completely get over. So let us finish it. All right. <clears throat> Although for marketing purpose, such a lengthy video is not preferable, but this is this this whole video covers so many essays. So I'll just keep it as it is. I'll continue with my own principles. All right, and not based upon YouTube algorithms. Essay five forty. Now in May twenty three, some students did not just do essay five forty, and they ended up missing out on two questions, which were a part of compulsory questions. I don't know for some strange reasons, five forty has been one of their favorites in exams. All right, and it has not been students' favorite. So please be careful. I'll give you some formula through which you can write some good points. When it comes to essay five forty, auditing accounting estimates, including fair value estimates and related disclosures, I'll be very quick with this now. <coughs> There are only three possible category of questions. One is they have given lots of examples, so we need to understand those examples. Then one question on one, I mean one category of question is risk assessment procedure. Second category of question is auditor's responses to the assessed risk. Now be very careful and attentive for the next few minutes. Tell me, 
when i say provision for doubtful debts first i am explaining the example provision for doubtful debts trade receivables provisioning and stuff in order to make this provision do you really need to find out some kind of market value of some item no no all right you need to know the way based upon past experience and based upon aging analysis what will be the provision fine you don't have to go somewhere and calculate some kind of market value but for valuation of investments in private limited company and let us say these are short term investments if you have made some short term investments in a private limited company then at the balance sheet date there will be a fair valuation which needs to be done you need to calculate the market value and stuff and accordingly only you can value it correct so what i'm trying to tell you is that there are two types of estimates one where you don't have to calculate any kind of market value second is where you have to calculate some kind of market value okay so look at this classification of estimates into fair value and other than fair value estimates examples where accounting estimates other than fair value accounting estimates may be required that means there is no calculation of market value over here whereas some estimates where you will have to compulsorily calculate the fair value only then you can come to the conclusion what should be the amount of that particular estimate and means compulsorily fair value or market value calculation is required <coughs> i hope i have made myself very very clear over here yes so provision for doubtful debts is other than fair value estimate in valuation of short term investments in private limited companies a fair value estimate accordingly these examples have been given you will feel that in all of these examples there is no need for calculation of a market value all right whereas in all of these examples you will have to calculate the fair value only then you will be able to come to the conclusion correct so it's so simple if they ask you to give examples and they had done this in multiple attempts all right just asking you to give the examples whether it is fair value or other than fair value you have to see it very carefully second way of looking at the same estimates tell me provision for doubtful debts in natugara private limited which has only 40 debtors <laughs> the provision and actual outcome may tally it is so predictable over there whereas when it comes to reliance industries limited which is a global company do you really think that even a provision for trade receivables will be something that you can easily calculate no in reliance industries limited there is also one more calculation called as estimation of oil and gas reserves you really think that the prediction and the actual outcome may tally no 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 in fact it would be materially different materially different all right so where the prediction and the actual outcome is only marginally different that is estimate with low uncertainty <laughs> bcom results but where the estimate and actual outcome there is a chance of actual outcome being materially different all right then that is estimate with high uncertainty so another way of looking at estimates is based upon based upon degree of estimation uncertainty so as you can see over here low uncertainty estimates and high uncertainty estimates when you go through these estimates you will feel that the actual outcome can be materially different but when you go through these estimates all right not complex routine and stuff you will be very you will be very clear that okay the actual outcome can be little marginally different but not materially different over here all right now listen to me estimates with high uncertainty they are an area of high risk of material misstatement in fact they can also be key audit matters in fact when i took the first revision video of key audit matters i gave you a code word also for determining key audit matters in the audit report of a listed entity we need to consider significant reit in that e was significant estimates with high uncertainty all right so these estimates in future can also be key audit matters i hope i made myself very very clear that is why estimation of oil and gas reserves we see it under key audit matters in the reliance audit report then there is one more set of examples <clears throat> indicators of management bias management bias bias means the person is not neutral the person is partial now when will you feel that management is turning out to be biased over here all right management is turning out to be biased over here when will you feel that this person is turning out to be biased over here so for that i have given the code word indicators of management bias cfo is op c if they are continuously changing the estimates abrupt changes without any kind of justification percentage has changed method has changed all right if somehow they are trying to bring the outcome in their favor 
दे आर रिकोगनाइजिंग एस्टिमेट इन सच अ मैनर दैट इट अचीव देयर ऑब्जेक्टिव स्पेशली वेन कंपनी इज लुकिंग फॉर फाइनेंस दे विल डू दिस ओ फॉर ओन अजम्पन नो इन मार्केट देर आर ऑलरेडी क्लियरली अजम्पन अवेलेबल Right, still they are constructing their own data. Right, like in depreciation, there is clear schedule to know of companies. Right, still they are going ahead with their own calculations only. Right, own assumptions, own methods. OP. Either it is optimistic attitude, which you can clearly see from the last five years, they are reducing the provisions. That that means they are going towards an optimistic pattern. Or let us say from the last five years, unnecessary they are increasing the provisions. So they are going towards a pessimistic pattern. So optimistic is bullish, aggressive, whereas pessimistic is too much of conservatism, bearish, all right, attitude. If such kind of pattern is getting developed, then maybe they are trying to achieve some kind of objective, all right. So you have to be very clear with that. These are the estimates with, I mean, these are the indicators of management bias. Now listen to me very carefully. You cannot locate bias at an individual level. When I look at your paper in aggregate, and when I see FR ninety five and FM ninety two and audit twenty nine, I hope that you get better marks. Everyone, I am taking too much effort for that. However, you know, if I see this mark sheet, then in that case, my God, I can understand when I look at aggregate level that you are you have turned out to be biased. Ah, huh? you are not focused on my subject. Ah, huh? so bias can be detected at aggregate level and not at individual level. And just because there is an indicator that management is biased that itself does not mean that there is a misstatement for that you have to do a retrospective review of all the past judgments and stuff all right then you will come to know whether there is a misstatement or not indicators of bias itself will not amount to misstatement sir there is a question on how to deal with management bias so these two lines are very important and there has been repeatedly a question in the old syllabus since grand old course it has been going on old and grand old also indicators of management bias for that you have the code word so these are all <coughs> example oriented points that we are done with <coughs> these are all example oriented points that we are done with now when we move ahead we see this discussion on risk assessment procedure and further audit procedures look at this go slow if there is a question with respect to estimates if they tell you that auditor needs to obtain an understanding of something risk assessment romm then we will come to know that they are asking about risk assessment procedure however if they have given you an estimate and they are saying that respond to this situation all right then we will understand that they are talking about further audit procedures all right now in risk assessment procedure i don't want to go highly conceptually over here because at the end of the day you'll have to write these words i'm going very uh, you know to the point in risk assessment procedures in sa 540 obviously you need to obtain an understanding understanding of what understanding of atm a for afrf t for tec transactions events and conditions and m for making of accounting estimate so if risk assessment procedure which has been asked n number of times atm a for afrf t for transactions events and conditions and m for making of accounting estimate why you want to obtain understanding of afrf you are just trying to obtain understanding don't write check whether check whether check whether oh, check whether sufficient and appropriate risk assessment procedure you are just trying to obtain an understanding of the things you are just trying to understand and evaluate check whether afrf has been followed or not is further audit procedures that is not risk assessment procedure because that is testing stage all right so you need to obtain understanding of the applicable financial reporting framework governing estimates all right why why you want to obtain this understanding so that you can understand rmd recognition measurement and disclosure recognition measurement and disclosure <coughs> requirements of the estimates only afrf will tell you these things then most importantly it is important to understand the tec the transactions events and conditions boss right tell me something <coughs> today in my sales contract if i don't have a warranty clause or guarantee clause then fine there is no contingent liability also but if i put a warranty clause or guarantee clause then obviously there is some kind of contingent liability so whether management is able to do this or not whether management identifies those transactions events and conditions which may either <coughs> lead to new estimate or it may lead to revision in the existing estimates which may either lead to new estimates or it may lead to revision in the existing estimates yes sir yes sir yes sir so for these transactions events and conditions these examples were asked in may 23 attempt the circumstances which may either 
make you feel that there is a need for new estimate or there is a need for revision in the existing estimate. If there is a new type of transaction, if there is a change in law, if there is a change in the AFRF, you get my point. If there is a change in the terms of the transaction, okay, such kind of points. <clears throat> Now this is a very basic point. Whether management will be actually able to identify these transactions, events, and conditions, and whether they will be in a position to actually, you know, understand the impact on the estimates. You know, there are so many startup entities. They will say, "Ah, uh, give ten thousand now. We will support you for next ten years." That is what ten years. We don't know whether it will exist for the next ten days or not. Right? So whether management will be able to identify such TEC for that you need to an analyze the knowledge of BSF of the management whether management has the knowledge of its own business whether management has the knowledge of the strategies because these things will lead to estimates contingencies liabilities and stuff whether management has an experience knowledge in the preparation of financial statements so B for business S for strategy implementation and F for financial statements are you getting my point yes or no sir yes sir. So be very clear about the questions that can be asked. As I told you in risk assessment procedure, we need to obtain an understanding of ATM. Galla galla galla. So A for AFRF, T for transactions, events, and conditions, and M for making the accounting estimate. Now listen to me very carefully. When I am trying to understand that how management has made the accounting estimate, this itself has been separate examination question was asked in January twenty one also. how management has made the accounting estimate for that i need to obtain an understanding of mecca effect i will call the management i will say hello what kind of methods you have used what kind of assumptions just a discussion yeah this is not a verification uh whether you've used an expert huh acha uh, which what kind of controls you have for this kind of estimate is there any change all right acha acha listen to which account this estimate relates for example provision for doubtful debt relates to trade receivables Then, how you have assessed estimation uncertainty, high uncertainty, low uncertainty, all right? So, mecca effect, method, model, expert, then controls, changes, assumptions, and effect of estimation uncertainty. So, I repeat, this is your content for risk assessment procedure. Please spend some few minutes over here. It is going to be very, 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 very scoring in exams. Now, listen to me. I'll give you one ninja technique. If the question is about further audit procedure testing, responding to the situation. all right whatever you have understood in risk assessment procedure okay same things will be verified in further audit procedure in risk assessment if i say understanding afr if in further audit procedure we have whether management has appropriately applied the requirements of afr hello 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 ha so whatever you are seeing in risk assessment procedure same things are getting repeated in further audit procedure but over there our english is that i want to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence to check whether okay and then you start your lines so you can read once just that some sensitive areas i will tell you if you see i've put one question on method i've put one question on model what what is this method model method is just a set of steps provision for doubtful debts will have a method But that security valuation chapter in AFM, whatever formulas used, that is model, right? Method or model or assumptions, whatever it is, common points are whether it is appropriate or not. What are the changes? Whether changes are reasonably justified? Whether it is as per AFRF? These common points you can use. Ray, hello, 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 hello. Yes. Okay. the sensitive areas i'm highlighting otherwise further audit procedure no need to buy it it is derived from risk assessment procedure only for example if you are writing understanding controls over here okay right? that we have understood the controls then over here see testing the operating effectiveness of controls okay i'm just looking at some important areas audit of estimation uncertainty estimation uncertainty it is very important that management assesses whether it is an estimate of high uncertainty low uncertainty so we will have to see whether management is applying these brains or not all right whether management actually considers what can be the alternative assumptions outcomes see because management needs to decide okay this is high uncertainty this is low uncertainty for example complex legal case is high uncertainty are you getting my point okay then whatever management has decided okay that okay so for example long term investments that means they don't have an intention to sell then i have to see the intent and the ability and stuff all right then i have to see whether uh, there is a need for me to calculate the uncertainty effect 
so these are some sensitive points which i'm just explaining logically no need to buy hard no need to buy hard the things that you need to buy it is only risk assessment procedure and further audit procedure will just get it derived from that so read one or two times this particular point of further audit procedure and just move ahead all right relax on that point you cannot be a, a complete expert in sa540 that's okay okay now over here <coughs> sometimes you know you have to show the you have to show the courage to write answers for example there has been a very repeatedly asked question of written representations when it comes to sa 540 that what kind uh, there are some sensitive estimates what kind of written, what kind of points you will include in the written representation of the management all right are whatever comes to your mind method assumption process afrf everything will ask management to write but if the estimates are sensitive i want to write i want management to give me a detailed written representation for that all right sometimes you have to show that courage all right to write the particular answer okay yes yes even if you finish this these many notes and just the past examination questions of sa540 that should be done and dusted all right okay now everyone over here the last essay for chapter 3 essays and that is sa520 analytical procedures i don't think students need me in sa520 analytical procedures but because institute has discussed some concept i have printed those couple of concepts we'll just go through that very quickly so analytical procedures nothing but the ratios comparison trend analysis and stuff all right now ratios comparison trend analysis any analytical procedures are used at various stages in audit it is used in planning stage also it is used in testing and completion stages also i will give you a practical example trend analysis of past profits that is how you use analytical procedures during planning stage for example i did a trend analysis of past performance and i saw that their profits are declining their managerial remuneration is increasing all right uh, they are borrowing at 8% and lending at 7% their credit rating is still increasing even though the borrowings are increasing my god what is this some kind of gadbad is going on all right so this is this will help me in rom analysis so analytical procedures can be used during planning stage also and when you use analytical procedures for risk assessment during planning stage that is sa315 and not sa520 sa520 talks about how to use analytical procedures during testing and completion stages only 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 i hope i've made myself very clear okay so ratios comparison trend analysis during risk assessment is sa315 and during testing and completion stage is testing and completion gst turnover comparison you know salary versus total number of employees where salary is the financial data total number of employees is non financial data all right um let us say sales versus the volume of goods as so i know outward and stuff and right, so these things okay now we don't over here what kind of concepts ics printed in the module very very logical when designing and performing substantive analytical procedures auditors are consider the following very logical points all right see boss you cannot verify everything by analytical procedures you have to see whether it is suitable or not because analytical procedure is a lazy procedure all right for example existence of inventory you cannot verify by analytical procedures you have to go touch that inventory see it all right but valuation of inventory you can do it the percentage of working progress and stuff so when you are designing and performing substantive analytical procedure you have to first consider the suitability then you have to consider whether the data itself will be reliable or not then boss let us see if the trend is going 6 8 10 then next year you expect 12 right you don't expect 120 so you have to set up reasonable expectation of the recorded amounts all right reasonable expectation of recorded amounts and let us see if it is 12 all right and the actual outcome is 13 or 11 you may just leave it it's okay so you have to decide what is the amount of difference that is acceptable to you so i repeat s r e d suitability of the procedure for a particular assertion r for reliability of the data all right whether the data itself will be reliable or not if the data is not reliable how will we conclude that analytical procedures are proper e for expectation should be reasonable right and that is that goes in your life also and d also goes in your life that difference that is acceptable to you right the actual outcome may not tally with the expectation but what is the acceptable amount of difference right so these points now listen to me suitability will depend upon art a for assertion like existence of inventory you can verify by 
physical inspection and not by analytical procedures right r for risk of material misstatement because if risk is high you can't just perform analytical procedure you will have to perform test of details also all right and t for test of details that you have performed so if you have already performed too many test of details maybe analytical procedures may just lose the relevance all right so if to see this because different analytical procedures will provide different level of assurance let me tell you just because analytical procedure is applicable that does not mean that it is suitable for example even uh, you know related party is the sales is 80 and total sales is uh, 100 so 80% of sales is done with related party so what fine analytical procedure is applicable but you cannot say that i have verified the whole related party through analytical procedure there is a difference between the word applicable and suitable Analytical procedure has to be suitable. All right, that means it sh you should be you should feel confident. All right, that yes, by performing this procedure, I will get some kind of level of assurance. I am doing this discussion so that you can understand this particular box. All right, okay. Then reliability of the data. This is very basic inter-sale level answer. It will depend upon source of information, whether it is an external evidence or internal evidence, whether the data itself is comparable or not. Indian company balance sheet you can straight away compare with US company balance sheet. All right. what what are the entities internal controls because if the controls are weak and the data is not reliable you can't perform analytical procedures because that will give you wrong conclusion all right then whether the data is logical or not all right like statistical information like standard costing and stuff budgetary control these are logical data all right so those things source of nature controls the comparability source nature controls comparability okay then expectation boss you can develop reasonable expectation only if you have more number of breakups if more number of breakups will teach you then how you need to be responsible no 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 i'm not talking about love life i'm talking about actual data okay that boss if you have more number of breakups in the data like purchase related party unrelated party domestic import cash credit okay so the more number of breakups you have you will be reasonable in your expectation but if you want to develop expectation the that person needs to be available i mean the data needs to be available also and you can develop expectation where the item is predictable not if it is run with of animal or right. predictability like gross profit sales purchase payroll these are predictable items so pad or you can use this code also but this one is better pad p for predictability e a for availability and d for disaggregation all right these things will help you in developing reasonable expectations and then we'll have to see the amount of difference that is acceptable without further investigation that will be based upon materiality that you are going to set i hope i'm very clear with this yes sir yes sir yes sir all right now after performing analytical procedures i repeat after performing analytical procedures if there are fdis fluctuations differences inconsistent relationship then first of all straight away don't say perform additional procedures no 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 first this is exactly their question they will set up this question then you have to say that first we'll conduct inquiry of the management we'll try to obtain response from them then we will try to understand that response and if you're not satisfied with that then we'll perform additional procedures please remember this sequence all right okay okay now i have printed one small box because it is from interest here but i still feel that the mcq level question can be important over here about public sector entities see let me be just explain this is one example and wind up this video now if an entity is running in losses since last 30 years you will start developing doubt over its going concern right but that's not the case in case of indian railways indian railways for major part of its life has been in losses but we never thought that tomorrow there will be no train all right exactly so normal commercial entity normal analytical procedures that we apply in commercial entities the same logics may not stand in case of non business public sector entities correct right? that is the point over here the relationship between individual financial items traditionally considered in case of audit of business entities may not always be relevant in the audit of government or the non business public sector entities like example indian railways then in case of indian railways what kind of procedures you will have to perform are actual expenditure versus budgeted expenditure and stuff what is the variance in that such kind of procedures will be relevant all right yes sir yes sir yes sir so there was limited discussion about identical procedures in the module but there was a discussion so i thought that i'll take it up properly all right so we are done with the entire revision in 100% sent english for chapter 3 ss more revision videos are coming up on this channel thank you so much stay connected